हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू क्रिएटिव मेडिसिन इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेटर्स नाउ लर्न सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट हाइड्राटेड सिस्ट सो वॉट डू यू सी इन हाइड्राटेड सिस्ट इफ यू सी हाइड्राटेड डिजीज इज ए जू नोसिस एंड प्राइमरीली इट इज सीन इन शीप रेयरिंग एरियाज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इट इज सीन इन शीप रेयरिंग एरियाज इन द वर्ल्ड दिस हाइड्राटेड डिजीज इज एक्चुअली endemic in it is endemic in mediterranean countries it is endemic in mediterranean countries it is endemic in mediterranean countries middle east far east and south america australia and new zealand it is it is endemic in new zealand and east africa so it is endemic in mediterranean countries middle east far east south america australia new zealand and east africa this hydrated disease is caused by entamoeba granulosis which is the most common cause it is caused by entamoeba multilocularis this entamoeba multilocularis is actually responsible for malignant hydratidosis it is responsible for malignant hydratidosis then we have entamoeba vogali and then we have entamoeba sorry this is not entamoeba hydratidosis escherichia sorry echinococcus i'm sorry okay the hydrated cyst is caused by echinococcus granulosus echinococcus multilocularis echinococcus vogali and it is caused by echinococcus oligarthrus okay hydrated cyst is caused by echinococcus granulosus echinococcus multilocularis echinococcus vogali and echinococcus oligarthrus so if you see the host features host it is seen in definitive host so if you see what is the definitive host definitive host is the dog hydrated cyst definitive host is the dog and what is the intermediate host intermediate host of hydrated uh, cyst is sheep then if you were asked what is the accidental host or dead end host accidental or dead end host or intermediate host all of this is men men can be an accidental host or dead end host or intermediate host then there is no human to human transmission you will not see any human to human transmission is not seen in hydrated cyst okay so what is hydrated cyst here you will see that there will be x of echinococcus okay this x of echinococcus will form a hexacanth larva this will form hexacanth larva which will penetrate the duodenal capillaries this hexacanth larva will penetrate the duodenal capillaries and then it will penetrate the portal vein and inferior vena cava and once it penetrates the portal vein it goes to the liver it penetrates the inferior vena cava and it will go to the lungs and other solid organs it goes to the lungs and other solid organs then what about the what does this involve this will so what about which is the most common organ to be involved the most common organ involved in hydrated cyst is liver is the most common organ involved followed by lungs followed by spleen followed by kidney okay followed by brain and bone is the last to be involved then if you see the clinical features in the clinical features you will see equal distribution is seen in both males and females you will see equal distribution and here most of the patients are asymptomatic 
okay most of the patients are asymptomatic and most common presentation if you see most common presentation will be asymptomatic palpable there will be asymptomatic palpable intra abdominal mass is seen asymptomatic palpable intra abdominal mass is seen what is this this is hepatomegaly you will see hepatomegaly is seen this is the most common presentation and if you see in symptomatic patients in symptomatic patients you will see presence of abdominal pain the patient will present with abdominal pain if symptomatic and there will be abdominal discomfort the patient will present with abdominal pain abdominal discomfort and dyspepsia then what is the most common complication most common complication of hydrated cyst is there can be intra biliary rupture there can be intra biliary rupture can occur okay next what about the diagnosis diagnosis the first investigation done in hydrated cyst is usg ultrasonography is the first investigation done and the diagnosis is mainly suggested by on ultrasonography you will see there will be rosette appearance is seen in the ultrasonography and if you see ct scan shows ring like calcification ct scan shows ring like calcification and also rosette appearance is also seen so what about the investigation of choice investigation of choice is actually hydrated serology hydrated serology we can do either elisa or we can do arc 5 or we can do immunoblot so these will have almost 95% sensitivity and specificity these will have 95% sensitivity and specificity and one more test which is done in uh, hydrated cyst is called as scan sony test this scan sony test is actually an obsolete test which is not done because this is this has low sensitivity number one and it has increased risk of anaphylaxis so we do not do this scan sony test nowadays now what is the drug of choice of this uh, uh, hydrated cyst the drug of choice is first the drug of choice for peri operative chemo prophylaxis the drug of choice for peri operative chemo prophylaxis is albendazole more than mebendazole so if you see important points this albendazole is actually scolicidal and it will shrink in size of cyst this will shrink in size of the shrink the size of the cyst albendazole is scolicidal and this will easily shrink the size of the cyst then if you see the surgical intervention in surgical intervention first you will have to see there is pair surgery first we have a surgery called as pair actually this pair includes puncture followed by aspiration of the content first you will puncture the cyst and then aspirate the content of the cyst and then you will instill the colicidal colicidal agents into the cyst and these colicidal agents will kill the um, echinococcus granulosus and then re you reaspirate the content so that is pair this pair is actually the most preferred technique it is most preferred technique so if you see what are the scolicidal agents used in pair pair technique so the scolicidal agents used include we use hypertonic saline is most commonly used most commonly used is hypertonic saline and then we also use 0.5% cetrimide 
is used with 0.05% chlorhexidine. 0.05% cetrimide is used with 0.05% chlorhexidine. We use 10% povidine. Iodine is used as a folicidal agent and absolute alcohol can be used. And if you see folicidal agents like formalin and also silver nitrate. Silver nitrate, these are actually not used due to toxicity. So we use hypertonic saline 0.5% cetrimide with 0.05% chlorhexidine, 10% povidine iodine and absolute alcohol is used. What are the contraindications of pair technique? Contraindications for pair technique include inaccessible cyst, presence of inaccessible cyst or cyst which is peripherally, presence of inaccessible cyst or peripherally located cyst or if there is any multiloculated cyst or presence of multiloculated cyst or if there is any cystobiliary communication. Inaccessible cyst, peripherally located cyst, multiloculated cyst, and cystobiliary communication. All these are, or if there is any cystobiliary communication, or if the cysts are present in either lungs or brain, or if the cyst is calcified, or if you see calcified cyst, or also called as dead cyst. Okay, in these conditions, the pair is contraindicated. Okay, then this is about pair. The second techniques which can be done are we can also do cyst evacuation can be done with omentopexy. You can do cyst evacuation and do omentopexy. So you have if this is the cyst, you will remove the cyst and then you will cover it with the omentum. Okay, so that is evacuation of cyst with omentectomy. Omentopexy. Omentopexy. Then you will do pericystectomy. What is pericystectomy? Here you will excise excision of cyst outside of pericyst. Outside of pericyst is pericystectomy. Outside the pericyst, if this is the pericyst, you will excite it outside the pericyst in the liver. Okay, that is pericystectomy. Then the fourth procedure is finally you can also do hepatic resection okay so these are the uh, procedures which are available then there is one classification which is important about uh, hepatic cyst these are the hydrated cyst which is garby's classification there is garby's classification for hydrated cyst there is garby's classification for hydrated cyst which is based on USG. So what do you see in this? In this first we have type 1 cyst. Okay, type 1 cyst you will see there is simple fluid collection. You will see presence of simple fluid collection in the type 1 cyst. Then we have type 2 cyst. In two, type 2 cyst you will see presence of floating membrane. Floating membrane. This is floating membrane. Or there will be undulating membrane, there is floating membrane, or there is undulating membrane, or there is water lily, floating membrane, undulating membrane, or water lily, or there is water snake sign. Okay, so this is about type 2. Then we have type 3. In type 3, you have multi loculated septa. So you will see multi-loculated, you will see multi-loculated, multi-septated honeycombing is seen. In type 3 you are seeing multi-loculated, multi-septated honeycombing is seen. Then we have type 4. Type 4 you will see presence of complex heterogeneous mass. You will see complex hetero genus mass is seen on type 4 okay then we have type 5 in type 5 you will see presence of calcified cyst in type 5 you will see calcified cyst so these are the 
फाइव गार्बी क्लासिफिकेशन फॉर हाइड्रेटेड सिस्ट बेस्ड ऑन यूएसजी थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग थैंक यू एंड थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग